So the boss is down, and we gotta go take an elevator ride into the mines, and oh boy, is this place fucked up. Ah, oh, breathe deep of the blessing, my friends. Who said being a dominant doesn't have its benefits? Sid, this is an ether flood. There shouldn't be one here, should there? The workers couldn't survive this. Well, it wasn't here last time, I can tell you that. Which means we need to be quick. The ether won't hurt us, but I'd rather not find out what it's done to everyone else. So, as it turns out, these Ashiks are people who were exposed to enormous amounts of ether. Now, it's mentioned earlier in the game that the magic crystals function by drawing ether out of the environment around them. Out of the air, out of the soil, out of the water, whatever. Now here we are by the mother crystal, which Sid believes is what is destroying the world, so it's pulling a lot of ether out of the area. And I guess it's sort of pooling in places. So you have this mine here, where I guess this is where they were pulling the crystals from. And the miners, well, they haven't had the best of time with it. If a person isn't a dominant, and I, I guess maybe a bearer might also survive this kind of thing, but I don't know that for sure. If a person is exposed to this much ether, they turn into these monsters. And that giant cannoneer was what we had, was the result of this kind of thing. Now these are lesser enemies, but they're still dangerous. So, you know, the more you know. <laughs> anyway, we got to continue on. And this area is a little bit more open in a sense, although it, it's not, it involves a wider little sections. Uh, it's not really a branching area, but some of the parts you get into seem a little bit more open. And actually, I guess earlier parts in the game were just like that then. What the hell am I talking about? Doesn't look that far. Right. I'm pretty sure all that was just a way to block off the bridge so you couldn't turn around and come back the way you came. Other game, although the game does actually sort of prevent you from accessing the world map or something and fast traveling to another section. So I don't think this was really necessary, but it has effectively locked us into the game at this point. Locked us into the dungeon. It also goes to show a little thing like... So Sid is a little older than the other characters. So I think Clive is like 24. And I... 24, 26, something like that. And Jill is one or two years younger than him. Now Sid, I would suspect he's in his mid-30s. So at that point, you're mid-30s, late-30s, something like that. Maybe he's 40. And, you know, it's hard to tell, especially with these Japanese games. He's at, the, he's at an age where, like, okay, so things aren't working as well as they used to. But there's also the issue that, that we've seen earlier that the use of magic does have a negative physical effect on the person who uses it. And they have that petrifying sickness. 
Now we've seen it primarily just affect bearers as they eventually turn to stone, but we have seen the effect work on um, on dominance as well. I mean, Joshua would cough every time he cast magic. We saw uh, Clive knocked himself unconscious after transferring into a free. We saw Sid earlier on in the game show his arm had like this giant rash developing on it. He may have been like petrifying just like a bearer would. So he is, I don't know, he's hes still pretty damn powerful. He can still transform into Rama, and we saw that happen earlier in the game, and he's still amazingly powerful, but he is breaking down, and I suspect like as the game goes on, we're going to see him becoming less uh, useful or less capable. This is something that bothers me. <laughs> this I didn't go near it. I didn't go near it until I came off to this side, but there's this gate... <laughs> You're going to tell me that these people couldn't uh, just roll under or crawl under <laughs> that gate right there? Come on. <laughs> so there's also the thing to consider that we're in this cave. Something else I thought of. We're in this cave, and we have this... This is the cave that the crystals are mined from. And this ether flood that they're talking about has somehow permeated the area and is just turning all the miners insane. They stop mining, they start just attacking everybody that gets near them. This could potentially be the reason for the... This could be the reason for the shortage of ether crystals. They had said before that it used to be that they distribute crystals willingly, like, and openly. Like, anybody who needed one can get an ether crystal. It's used for all sorts of things. We saw people using it for refrigeration, for filling wells, doing this, that, and all this other kind of stuff. But in recent years, the Chris or the recent times, I don't know how long, the crystals have become more and more rare. And that's why uh, the Empire has become more and more dependent on using the bearers to use do their magical crap. Is this the reason why? Is it because the mines that they source the crystals from are now inaccessible? That it's too dangerous to progress in here because any miner you send in just ends up uh, dying <laughs> or going insane and they stop working? Maybe. Seems logical, doesn't it? Also, the, uh, Sid pointed out that it wasn't... It, you'd think that the guards outside were there to keep people from sneaking in. Now, as it turns out, they're there to keep people from getting out. These insane people from getting out. They're basically contained here. Which does kind of make sense when you think about it. Because Clive had made note that when they were outside completely, before they had gotten inside the cave, that guard duty... Like, the guards were rather not... Uh, the sentries were rather lax. There weren't many of them. Sid made a joke. He's like, yeah, they don't take it as seriously as you do. Well, it's because the guards outside, they're not... Um, they're not there to keep people from getting in. And that's what you'd expect people on the outside to be. And it's... There are more guards stationed further inside, out at the gate. And they were the ones that were important. They were the ones that were keeping people from escaping. Just a little detail. They, it, it does show that they are thinking of this kind of thing. These little, these little details. It makes sense to have this kind of stuff in the game. And they're... Oh, friggin' little chumps while I'm trying to fight the mini-boss. This kind of little attention to world building, I think, is really important to make the world feel like it's real, like it's significant. Because if you have inconsistent little details here and there, it's always just going to kill the suspension of, dis uh, suspension of belief. Suspension of disbelief. Su suspension. Yeah, suspension of disbelief, I guess. Yeah. Fuck. I'm tired. <laughs> anyway. Oh, man. This guy hits... These mini-bosses, the, the game is littered with these little mini-bosses. And they can be a real pain in the ass. You gotta stay up on your, your gameplay. <laughs> and I something I have to keep reminding myself is you gotta use the potions. Because you don't really have any magic. And Torgal can heal you, but he doesn't do great, great of a job healing you. So 
Don't be afraid to use potions. You'll find potions. <laughs> All these uh, miners had gill on them. <laughs> Now, if this is where they mine the crystals from, are the smaller crystals in the rock? Or do they gotta break it off of the mother crystal itself? I'm not quite getting that. Uh, whatever, I'm, I'm getting too focused on details. I see they replaced that wooden door with something a little more sturdy. Alright, well... I guess we gotta break through this. <laughs> Trying to keep people out. Uh, well, we're already inside. Why would they do this now? On the count of three. Three. What happened to two? Ask one. <sighs> Once more. Aye, seeing as you're trying now. As if that was going to keep us out. This definitely doesn't seem like it's the main way to get down here. Especially once we reach the other side, you're going to see us nice, intricate details and temple-y kind of crap. The mother crystal's just up ahead. Is it? I can't see a thing. Well, unless someone's moved it. big but this there that's our way into the inner sanctum you'd think they'd have patched that up by now Sorry, state the Empire's in. Wait. You don't mean... Aye. My little game of hide-and-seek with Bahama ended here. At tragic cost to this remarkable architecture. Don't blame me, he started it. But how did he make it out alive? I walked. You should try it. So, Sid fought Bahamut here. Well, have to figure that out later. Have to end the episode. Thanks for watching.